I'd like to uh, welcome you to our online service this weekend. And whatever platform or whatever way you're access, accessing the service, we want to just uh, take a minute and pray that we would all become sensitive to the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Father, I just lift up each person who's watching, each person who's participating, whether their participation will be just in watching or they'll be joining in singing or joining in prayer or both, whatever it might be, Lord, I just lift up each and every one of them to you. I pray, Lord, that you will prepare all of our hearts for this time and that we might sense the presence and listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello, everybody. I'm just so happy that you've come to join us in our online service today. And we just want to lift up the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about that God has, has lifted that name at the highest place. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. Wherever you are right now, I just encourage you to just say that name and lift up the name of Jesus because in that name there is power. In that name there is healing. In that name there is provision. Let's just sing a hallelujah. Worship to him. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. And I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm.
Creation knows the voice that spoke into the void. The breath that brought the dust to life and sang the stars to fall. The darkness feared your voice. That drove it back before And though the night is long I know your light Will drive it back once more One word from you Things change on your fight is not my own it's end is in your hands I worship you because I know all things must bow to your command Strongholds not be moved, will spirits not be silenced, and cower at his rule. For if my God is for me, then what have I to fear? And I will not deny him the glory that is his. Heaven will prevail, and strongholds will be moved. The spirits will be silenced and cower at his rule. I know my God is for me, so what have I to fear? For nothing will deny the glory that is his. Heaven will prevail, the strongholds will be moved, the spirits will be silenced.
going to pray for the different needs we have. And if you're on one of the platforms that has a way for you to click on a button and, and know that we, you have an unspoken request, or if you just want to write down, if you're on a, uh, like YouTube where there's an access to a, uh, a place where there's place you can make a comment and just say unspoken request, we're going to pray for all of those requests now. We'll pray for unspoken requests. Pray for those who are physically sick for healing. Uh, we're going to pray for all of the different issues that are going on in the world right now, different world crises, and then and we're going to be praying. Uh, I'm going to pray for those who are uh, generous people that the Lord will speak to their hearts. So let's go to the Lord together. Father, first of all, we bring all of our unspoken requests before you, Lord. We know that uh, it is not necessary that there's a specific prayer focusing on a specific need, Lord, but when we bring our needs before you and we bring each other's needs before you, you know every need, you know every solution. And so we lift up all of these unspoken requests to you, Father, not just ours, but all the members of all the congregation. We lift them up to you. Father, we want to pray for all the members of our church who are sick. There are a number who are sick, a number who are really struggling, and especially uh, struggling with cancer, Lord. We know that there are a lot of medical things that can be done, and sometimes medicine is even not really offering any hope, but we know that there's always hope in you. So we pray that you would strengthen those who are physically suffering with sickness or disease, and we pray that you would do miracles in their life, whether they would be healed through medical means, uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit in enabling their bodies to be strengthened by medical means, or whether it's a miracle that happens, Lord, in some cases when there seems to be nothing medically that can be done. We lift up those people. Father, I'm really concerned about the different things that are happening in the world, so many different parts of the world, the instability, the crisis, the, 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 the war in Europe and the other places where enemies are shouting at each other across borders, people wanting to take advantage of the confusion in the world to pursue their own ends. Father, I pray that you would just be with those young people and old people and poorer people who don't have the resources to be able to be safe and secure in a time like this. Father, we see natural disasters, we see humanitarian disasters, and we just lift up each and every person and all of them, Father. We have recently been praying for the, the refugees from the Ukraine. We've been praying for those people who are suffering in Sri Lanka, Lord, and we continue to pray for those people who are suffering in Pakistan. We pray, Lord, that you would help the help that we have sent them to, to benefit them, Lord, in every way. Father, we're just getting ready. In a couple of weeks, we'll be going into our missions month, and we'll be presenting before the congregation uh, the needs that we would like to participate as a church in helping. Many different kinds of outreach, Lord. These are not things for ourselves. These are things for people who need help. And we pray that you would prepare all of our hearts that we would be able to be generous givers in this time and that we would be able to meet all of these needs. We thank you and praise you for these things, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's good to be with you today, IES. You know, last week we had a great, uh, a great week in a ministry with Pastor Christopher Alam here. For those of you that watch the only the online service, uh, you heard a great message about why we preach the gospel, not just why he preaches, but why all of us should share the gospel. If you were in our in-person service last week, you know that Saturday night and Sunny morning, many people came to the front, were prayed for and filled with the Holy Spirit. We just want to encourage you, if that's you today, make it a regular part of your life. As you pray, pray in the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to have His way. And someone asked me, well, Pastor, now when I pray, all, all that comes out, I just keep wanting to pray in the Spirit. Give the Holy Spirit time. If God is wanting to do something, then take the time, set aside time, Pray in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to do the work that God wants to do it. And then realize that the Holy Spirit's presence in your life is not just for you personally. It's for empowering you for ministry. And so having prayed and prepared, be bold and confident and, and pray for people when you meet them. Being filled with the Holy Spirit doesn't make us more spiritual in that sense. It just opens a door for us to be used by God to accomplish his work and to do more in his kingdom. So we encourage you, please take those things seriously and continue in them and grow in them and allow what God is doing to grow and flourish in your life. And it will grow and flourish in the church. And we will all 
be blessed. But this week we are coming together for communion, and I hope you've prepared your communion elements, bread and juice, so that later we can celebrate together. But as we look today at communion, we want to consider the idea of Jesus' submission to God and his call for us to follow his example. Now, again, make sure that your communion is prepared, but we want to read scripture together and consider how Jesus submitted his life to God the Father because that becomes the model for the expectation for us to submit our lives to him. So would you read these scriptures with me from Philippians chapter 2 and from one verse from Luke 22? Have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, He made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. And then Luke 22, 42. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet... Not my will, but yours be done. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your example. We thank you, Jesus, that you came to be one of us, that you endured life here on earth in order to bring us to life with you. Be glorified, O God, and accomplish your work in our hearts and speak to us today that you would be honored in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, submission. I I find the word submission very uncomfortable. Uh, It reminds me very much of junior high school PE class. I was a very skinny, muscle-less kid. I was long and lanky, and I had no leverage when it came time for wrestling. A little benefit in basketball other than that I couldn't shoot. But when we had to wrestle, I couldn't do anything. I would lose over and over, and I would always get in a submission hold, and it was done. I hated wrestling. I hate that idea of of submission, of being totally without control, someone holding me down and holding me back. And often when we think of submission, submission means giving up control, It means total vulnerability. It means trusting in somebody else. We don't like that. But what if we're submitting to something that is good and someone who has our best interest at heart? Now, in weddings, when I preach the message, I often use Ephesians 5, 22, and 23, and the passage starts with this line. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands. Now, in some crowds, the stir that creates is quite interesting. I remember one wedding where most of the people in the audience were not believers, and there were a lot of young professional women, and they were really uncomfortable with that passage. But in the end, as I continue, we see that everyone turns out okay. Because the passage does tell women to submit to their husbands, but it also tells the man to love his wife with her best interest at heart. Love her to the point of even giving up his life 
for her. Both looking out for one another's best interest. And then everyone was calm. Now, the passages that we read earlier talk about Jesus' submission to the Father. Jesus gave up his position. Jesus gave up comfort. Jesus gave up closeness and immediate presence with God. He gave up wealth in a sense, and he accepted life in an imperfect world when he had never been in such a dysfunctional setting. Jesus submitted to God to accomplish God's purpose to see God's purpose fulfilled because Jesus loved God. He was committed to God. He trusted God. In fact, Jesus puts his eternal existence in God's hands. We read in Hebrews 5-7, during the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Submission was what connected him with God. Jesus wanted the same things God wanted to prepare us to be with him. We read in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Jesus loved what God loved and wanted what God wanted. Jesus loved you And Jesus loved me, and Jesus loved the people around us and was willing to endure hardship and struggle because he submitted to God's plan. And it was just as much his commitment to God's plan as it was God's plan. So Jesus then becomes a model of submission for us. The problem with submission is it's not in our nature, is it? Even Adam and Eve in the garden were told, don't eat of this one fruit. Everything else is fine. And yet, what did they do? They went and ate the fruit they weren't supposed to. Even in that simple thing, they didn't submit themselves to God's authority. They took authority for themselves. Romans 8, 7 talks about our struggle with submission. It says, The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. We all struggle with submission. It requires effort. We have to understand this. When we become a believer and we want to submit to God, we do have to put the effort in. We can't just do whatever we feel like because what we feel like is in contrast to what God desires for us. And he wants what is good for us. And so what we're saying is the, the, the natural urges and drives of life that challenge what God has called us to do, those things are sin. But not only does it require our effort to submit to God, it also requires that we allow God to work in our lives. God's Holy Spirit is a necessary part of the process of us submitting to God. Submission to God, the act or effort of submission, is important, though, because it sets us free and aligns us with Christ. Now, Jesus frees us from sin. We also have to let go. 
we're clinging to sin and we have to let go. Jesus frees us and our submission to him allows us to move away from sin and towards Christ. James 4, 1 through 10 says this, Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think Scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. It's powerfully stated there that being friends with being friends with the world makes us enemies of God. It puts us in opposition to him. It makes us people who fight against his purposes. You cannot be with God in submission and be against God. So we need to be aligned with God. We need to submit to him. It says resist the devil. What does that do? It brings us closer to God, and it also causes the devil to flee. Clearly, this is presented as a process as well. The more and longer we submit, the more we draw closer to God. We begin to see his purpose fulfilled in our Lies. I like the line that Christopher Alam said last week. It's not how much of the Holy Spirit we have, it's how much of us the Holy Spirit has. How much are we fully submitted? Are we fully given over to God? This process of submission to God prepares us to be with Christ. You can see it in that passage there, that we are in preparation to be with him. We, he is jealous and longs for us. And that submission prepares us to be with him. And I love this last passage there. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Humility in this case is acknowledging God's authority and recognizing that we are under him, that we don't take authority for ourselves, but we submit to his authority. And when we do, he lifts us up. What did he do with Jesus? He sits him in the highest place, sits him at the right hand of the Father. God will also, when we submit to him, when we have submitted to him, he will lift us up. And he will enable us, and he will strengthen us. So when we're submitting to God, we're submitting to the one that has our best interest at heart. Today we celebrate communion. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples. He's already washed their feet and shown them this idea of humility. His willingness to submit even to them as a servant, as one who's honoring God. He's about to fulfill the words that we read above by submitting self even to the cross. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So as we celebrate communion today, we need to remember The communion is the celebration of Christ's submission. And communion also should be for each of us a reminder just as Christ submitted to God, we also must completely and totally submit ourselves to him. Where are you at today? Are you in enmity with God? 
Or are you one who is submitting yourself? Today we want to celebrate as people who are aligned with Christ, who are aligned with God, who are in full submission. So before we take the elements, let's pray. Lord God, it is our desire that we would walk fully committed to you. Lord, where we have sinned, we pray that you would forgive us and that you would direct us so that we don't go there again. I pray, Lord, if there are things that are wrong in our life, you would make them clear for us and we would submit again to you. I pray that your Holy Spirit would make your way to become our way. That you would work the process that required in our life that we can live as those who are fully submitted to you, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. We are your people submitted to you. The Apostle Paul, interesting, that he is one so antagonistic to Jesus in his early days, who meets Jesus on the road, who is blinded by the light and, and then fully submits, even willing to endure such great hardship. He's the one who writes what we often read here at Communion. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And as we take these elements today, I want to remind you that when we proclaim the Lord's death, we proclaim Jesus' submission. And when we receive these elements, we acknowledge that we also desire to be fully submitted and given over to whatever it is God has for us. Lord, we thank you for what you have given up for us. We thank you that you were fully in alignment with God the Father and willing to do whatever it took to see his purposes fulfilled. And we thank you that you are at the right hand of the Father, that you are in the most high place, Lord God, and that we have confidence that you are at work in us to develop that same submission in our own lives. Be glorified, Lord, as we receive the bread. And we thank you for this cup. We recognize that your life is given in place of our own. We still struggle, but you make us holy. We still struggle to submit, but you make us holy and you enable us to fulfill that submission. Lord God, help us to take seriously the sacrifice that you've made, that we would be willing to sacrifice ourselves to bring glory to you, to see your purposes fulfilled in all of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take the cup. Let's just thank the Lord for what he has done and for the work he's accomplished Let's thank him for his submission and willingness to endure. 
And let's offer ourselves to him. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the model that you have given, for the way that you have shown us. We pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit would be upon us, that you would enable us, empower us, and direct us, that you would convict us of our sinfulness, and you would direct us to your way, that you would lift us up and strengthen us, that your blessing would be with us, and we would submit fully and completely to you every day. May you be glorified with each of our lives. May we bring honor to your name because we are walking in tune with you. Father God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for the hope that you give us. Lord Jesus, for your example and for your salvation, we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here today directing us and leading us and empowering us and guiding us through. To your name, O oh God, be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you, I guess. I belong to you I belong to you In my words, Lord, I'll be gentle In my actions, kind and thoughtful Cause I belong to you in my dealings I'll be fair and not self-seeking cause I Just to please you, yes, sir.